What a night in fight sports. From eight walls to four, we take it to boxing, where we had two main events Saturday night at the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Jermal Charlo taking on Sergei Derivenchenko in the first of two main events. The second would feature Jermal's brother, Jermel. We'll get to that in a moment. But Derivenchenko, the toughest test that Jermal Charlo has seen to date. His only two losses came to Triple G and Danny Jacobs. Picked that up in the third round. Charlo stinging Derivanchenko with a right hand. Uh, Derivanchenko able to stay on his feet, so no knockdown scored. But here in the fifth round, Charlo with his back against the ropes lands a left hand that's going to open a cut over the right eye of Derivanchenko. The Ukrainian is cut. In round eight, Teddy Venchenko starting to loosen up, lands a left hook of his own, then hurts Charlo to the body, swarms him a bit here, so a fight is breaking out in the eighth round. Just two warriors going at it. We go to the 12th and final round. Charlo finishing in style. Three-piece combo ends with a patented uppercut to the chin of Derivanchenko. Both fighters leaving it all in the ring, but this one goes the way of the favorite. Jamal Charlo wins a unanimous decision and retains his WBC World Middleweight Championship and advances to 31-0 for his career in the process. Here's a look at your winning wagers. Charlo was the favorite going off at minus 240. If you got him via decision, that paid even money. Fight to go the distance. Uh, we had some money there as well, but the most popular wager, 80% of the tickets coming in on Charlo on the money line. How about baby bro? Jermel Charlo, the younger by a minute of the twin brothers with his eye on three straps. A WBC, WBA, IBF junior middleweight unification bout with Jason Rosario, the 25-year-old challenger Rosario on a six-fight win streak but has not faced anyone the caliber of Charlo. Early first round, Charlo on the attack, lands two left hooks that drop Rosario. Charlo's left hook lands right on that temple. And then late in the sixth, Charlo lands a heavy left hook followed by a right hook that going to stagger Rosario once again. And then in round eight, it's a jab to the body that drops Rosario. The fight is over. No mas. The young man is in pain. Jermal Charlo loving it as well, looking on as the younger brother, Jermel, gets it done. So we got two Charlos heading home with four belts. It's a party at the Charlo house. Everyone's heading home with some hardware. Here's a look at your winning wagers. Jermel was a heavy favorite at minus 500. Got it done via KO or TKO. That's minus 138. Fight not to go the distance. They had it tabbed as such at minus 250. We now welcome in co-hosts of the Morning Combat podcast, our CBS Sports Combat analyst, Brian Campbell and Luke Thomas. Uh, gentlemen, when you look at this one, let's begin with what we saw last, talking about Jermel Charlo first off here. Uh, really a dominant performance, gets it done by way of the knockout. BC, what stood out to you here in, in this really dismantling of his opponent? Just the incredible poise and efficiency out of Jermel Charlo, who wasn't worried about how many punches he was throwing, just worried to make them count. Over nearly eight full rounds, he was outlanded, according to CompuBox, 85 to 64 mm. by Jason Rosario, yet he was able to drop Rosario three full times. And as you saw, that fight ending with a lead power jab to the stomach, leading to convulsions, gulping for air. I think, Luke, we learned what we knew coming in. From the eye test, Jermel Charlo, the best junior middleweight in the world. Now he's got three of the four belts to prove it. Yeah, we'll talk about his brother in just a minute, but both Charlos basically kind of leveled up tonight. I take two things away from Jermel's win. BC kind of indicated he was outlanded, not just in aggregate, in jabs, in shots to the body, and in power punches. In all the major categories, he was the one who was doing less of the work, but as you can see, it counted more. The second thing I would say is when he dropped Rosario, it was in three different kinds of ways. They weren't all the same, especially the last two, totally different. So it just goes to show that this is a guy, Jermel Charlo, who is not only a technician and the best in this division, he's got ways to hurt you in all kinds of unique scenarios. Leaving all of the future opponents plenty to prepare for. Uh, let's talk about the first main event of the night with Jermel, now 31-0, and unblemished, showcased some different styles himself in this matchup. Uh, he's successfully defended this WBC title 
now four times. What does a win like this do for his career? I, I mean, you, you say it levels him up here, Luke, but uh, to what extent? Well, there is still some more work to be done in that division. Unlike his brother, who basically claimed the mountaintop without a whole lot of dispute, Jermall still has some work. But the key tonight was not really that he defended his WBC title for a fourth time. He beat somebody that the skeptics said he just couldn't beat. They said he could not fight somebody and win who had seen other top challengers like Triple G or Danny Jacobs, who could get inside and make him work. And yet he was able to do all the things that Jamal Charlo is basically known for. Now, don't get me wrong. Derek Vincenco put him through the paces then a couple of, I would say more than that, maybe three, four rounds. But in the end, it was a grown performance. It was a comprehensive performance. And now the kind of names, BC, that a guy like Jamal Charlo can call out, it's not crazy to call out Canelo. And that's a very competitive fight, at least on paper. Yeah, Jamal Charlo had passed that eye test like his brother in so many ways. Just hadn't had the... You know, the proving ground against a truly elite middleweight. He got that from Sergei Dervinchenko, but what's most impressive is while we saw Dervinchenko come as close as you can come to winning a world title in a split decision loss to Danny Jacobs and an absolute flip-a-coin war against Gennady Golovkin, Jermall seemed to have the easiest time of the three despite this being a close and exciting fight. And I think that's because... Unlike Jermel, who was a little bit too patient maybe, but still got the finish, Jermel got out there with the jab. He showed you the complete game, the poise, the game plan, the toughness. Yes, Dervinchenko had his moments, but you saw Sergey's face at the end of that fight. Jermel Charlo means business in this division. Both brothers as a whole, 30 years old. What are they now? 71 and 1 combined. Yeah, they made a crazy. large statement on this night in this unique and historic double pay per view that uh, I don't know where your top 10 pound for pound is at right now, Joe, but the Charlos are knocking. It had to have been a tough Thanksgiving, huh? Year after year, I'm not sure that's a living room that I want to be knocking around in. Gentlemen, fantastic stuff all night long. We will continue to keep it locked on all your content. BC, I know you're going to have some stuff up soon on CBSSports.com. And you can always get more from this dynamic duo on the Morning Combat Podcast. It's Luke, it's Brian, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 Eastern, live on YouTube, talking, talking all things fight. You won't want to miss it. It's the Morning Combat Podcast. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.